Welcome. Jeff here reporting for We Are Change Melbourne, covering the Victorian lockdown crisis. We have residents kept in their homes, trapped against their will like prisoners. The food that's being served to them is expired, completely out of date, which has a potential for food poisoning. One resident tried to escape the apartment buildings. The amount of stress that they're all suffering is extreme. I would not be surprised if by the end of this ordeal people were found hanging inside their apartments from nooses. This is very extreme what's taking place and the people are suffering. We're going to give you a look exactly what's happening as much as we can possibly film. Let's check that out now. So directly behind me is one of the apartment buildings where people are held, 76 Canning Street. The place is swarming with police. We've had reports of people putting signs against their windows, begging for help. So much turmoil, so much anguish. This is my local shopping centre, you know? And these people's local shopping centre, but they're not allowed to go there. Yeah. Um, I think they should just test the people, and if they don't have it, let them out, you know? If they do, quarantine. Yeah, that's right. And for healthy people to be quarantined, it's a violation of human rights, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. So right behind me is the apartment buildings on Racecourse Road. You know, it really is demoralising what the residents are suffering through. I wouldn't treat an animal like this to give them out-of-date food. As I said, the conditions are really appalling. ScoMo, Dan Andrews, you really should be ashamed of yourselves. This is no way to treat the Australian people. So I'm here with Autumn, who has been present the last couple of days, witnessing the conditions that people are enduring. It really is horrible, isn't it? It really is. It's an absolute abomination on human rights, to be honest. It certainly is. What would you say to the Andrews government in regards to the way people are being treated at the moment? It's just not good enough. First of all, at the very, very least, they should have had a proper plan. They should have been given enough notice to not lock down. Uh, they should have been able to go off and get their groceries. We certainly should not be uh, isolating people who have no symptoms inside. Sure enough, like, by all means, I understand you want to control this virus. However, why not simply isolate the people who have had direct contact? Uh, I recall you saying, or well, all the media reports saying uh, only a couple of months ago that it was a close contact was considered somebody who had come spent at least 15 minutes to half an hour or whatever it was with a active confirmed case. Um, I can't imagine that out of 3,000 people, out of the 23 cases of positive uh, COVID-19 that you found, that three, all 3,000 people had come into close contact, considering these, these apartments are huge. They're spread out, out over nine different apartments, over several, how, how, who knows how many levels. That's right. And, you know, a, a lot of people uh, surviving through it, the mortality rate, 99% of people get over it. Just the, even the flu is a lot worse than this COVID-19. A lot of it really doesn't add up. The measures being taken are unnecessary. Denying people the right to visit family members, even in retirement villages. It really is a deprivation of liberty, isn't it? It absolutely is. And why pick on these people? Why make a different, room, a different rule for them when there are the rest of the neighbouring suburb is not in this kind of hard lockdown? We've got, uh, I understand that you probably believe that it, whether it's true or not, whether it, that it spreads uh, quickly, more quickly in high-rise buildings where everyone's living on top of each other. However, we've got high-rise buildings just to the back of these buildings. Why aren't they in the same kind of lockdown? You are making an example of these vulnerable people who come from different ethnic backgrounds, who are, have lower socioeconomic status, who don't know the laws like a lot of um, you know, born and bred Australians might know that are a little bit more... I guess educated in the Australian way or more connected. They don't have the support systems that we have. They don't have, 
there's, there's so many things that they are missing. They are extremely vulnerable. Why are you taking advantage of them? It seems like an absolute discrimination against race and class, in my opinion. And you were supporting Black Lives Matter only several weeks ago, and now you're just pissing all over them. He sure is. And a lot of the masks that people are wearing, they're breathing in their own toxins. This is really unsafe and it's not a measure that should be taking. It's not going to help anybody. In fact, it's weakening people's immune system, cleaning benches, using sanitizers. This is very harmful. Have you been wearing a mask? Uh, look, I'll admit right at the very beginning when this all um, came out, I was scared. I bought into the whole media fear mongering campaign. And understandably, like I think a lot of people did because we didn't know what we were dealing with. Now, months down the track, there's scientific data coming out saying that it's it's not as virulent as we, we originally thought. There is so much evidence to show that it's a freaking government and media fear mongering for a different al alternative agenda to try to bloody control us and make us a communist state. And it's just not fucking good enough and we are not going to take it lying down. Very well said. A very passionate response. We need more people like yourself down here speaking their mind, expressing their rage against what's taking place. It really is downright disgusting the way people are being treated and the Australian public deserve better. How do you feel about the people handing out expired food and the food that they're eating is stale? Uh, yeah, that's, that's terrible. Uh, not to man mention the fact that they are not I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of Australians that live there as well that are very grateful for their wheat bix, but I'm sure they would have liked some milk with their wheat bix. And I certainly don't think it's culturally appropriate food for a lot of the um, refugees at, that have come here. Um, you gave them wheat bix with no milk, you gave them tuna with no bread, you gave them jam. What are they expected to have for breakfast? Jam on a freaking dry wheat bix. They said that. Whoa, we've got people fighting down the back here. It's getting explosive. It looks like it's turning nasty. Oh dear. Um, are you okay? You all right? Is everybody all right? Um, oh yeah, regarding the CDC, um, they, they say, state that you don't necessarily have to have a positive test result in order to label a COVID case positive. Um, that you just have to, has to have enough symptoms to suspect the case, um, so to, su to suspect it as a positive case. So given the fact that the list of COVID-19 symptoms seems to be growing by the day, that doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence that you're actually labelling all of these, um, these people who are dying with COVID-19 from other, mainly from other symptoms of um, pre-existing serious life-threatening conditions or old age. Um, it doesn't give me great hope that you're actually um, identifying these cases properly. Um, yeah, another thing that, uh, that I know that's going on in these buildings here is from some people I spoke to yesterday, I got confirmation that their dogs are allowed outside. Um, they're allowed to be walked for 15 minutes. I'm not sure if that's 15 minutes a day or whatnot, um, but obviously they've got to come out and I guess do their business. However, the children aren't allowed to come with them. So one person's allowed to bring them out. So what does that say to you? That these people's dogs are being treated better than them, literally. They, you guys, the Andrews government, respect the lives of dogs more than these people. What does that say about you and your humanity? Yes, it's very cold-blooded the way things are being handled. Well, the tensions are escalating here. The panic, anger and aggression is really coming out in people. Let's hope we have the best outcome for the residents here. It really is upsetting to see. To move this area, you are now required. And he walks up. Real bright, check. Keep protecting the pedophiles. have brought out that this is all invalid. Can I put you on a live feed? Because I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 
We've got word from uh, the Brixton solicitors that are working over in the UK that all of this COVID-19 rubbish is just that. So in order for anything to be done with the Health and Safety Acts, any quarantine acts, any lockdown acts, you must have first have isolated and recognised the virus, the bacteria or what have you. Sol's done some information, I've got some information here, he's done some research. This is Dr Stephen Lunker. The point of this is, is the coronavirus, COVID-19, has never been isolated. All the tests are 80% false positives. All the death certificates have been written out fraudulently. They have been manipulated. This entire thing is an absolute hoax. It even says on the CDC website, doesn't it? Yep. It says that it can't, it can't isolate the virus from a common cold. Exactly. And the coronavirus has been around for thousands of years, probably, the coronavirus. So... Are you going to arrest your officer for disobeying the law as well, by like not giving us his, um, his badge details, this man over here, with his identity very conveniently hidden?